and welcome back to Linda Tina TV if it's not your first time here if it is your first time hello there welcome to the LT family do not forget to subscribe because if you click on this video I'm sure you're gonna find something you enjoy now um, as you have seen from the title of the video I'm going to be talking about mistakes that I made when I moved to Italy which will be almost a decade ago oh my god it's almost 10 years like next year it will be 10 years and I'm calling them mistakes in the title of this video, but to be honest, I don't look at them as mistakes. I just look at them as things I could have done differently to settle me easier and quicker into the country, which I now call home. So if that sounds interesting, please stay tuned. This doesn't necessarily refer to Italy only, but obviously I'm speaking from my experiences living in Italy. But this video could be helpful for anyone moving abroad, moving to a new country, a new state. It could be helpful. So just stay tuned and let's share what our mistakes have been. Number one, limiting myself to expat friends and English speakers. So when I moved to Italy, one of the first things I did was go online and find groups of English speakers and expat friends. And I won't tell you how helpful that was for me, how comforting it was for me to go out once in a while to speak to people who speak the same language because it took me a while to learn Italian. So that was very helpful, but also looking back in retrospect it held me back from learning italian so it took me a longer time to a longer time to immerse myself into the language and the culture so when you move to a new place try, try to get um closer to the locals as well now i'll be honest it wasn't really because i didn't want to get closer to the locals but in milan i found that um people kind of had their circles already everyone is raised here they've gone to the same schools they work together i don't know it was kind of hard for me to break into those circles um until i had my son which was um two years later two three years later when i joined mommy groups the first mommy groups i joined was still english speaking mommy groups that were amazing i still have mommy friends from those groups but then I started making friends with other moms because I used to find them at the park. I mean, Italian moms, I used to find them at the park. My kids started going to school, to kindergarten, to daycare. And so that's how I started, you know, breaking into the circle of the locals. Number two, relying so much on my husband. Now, if you don't know, I moved to Italy um, to be with my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time. We met in Uganda, in my country, but at the time it made more sense for me to move here, like if we wanted to stay together long term, which we did want to do. So it made more sense for me to move to Italy, and that's how I ended up in Italy. I moved for love. But the thing is, you know when you move to a place with someone, with a reference person there already, you kind of get lazy. And for me, I, I look at it as a blessing, as well that i had my husband here i have friends who had moved here as maybe students or they had come here to work and they didn't have anyone to ask anything to rely on like a local a person from here and it was really tough for them so it was a blessing for me to have my husband you know by my side to do things for me gosh he used to take me even to the hospitals like to the gynecologist <laughs> i used to go with him but the thing is that made me um kind of slow down the process of you know like settling into the country because i was like no my husband will do it my husband will do it and also i didn't do my own research on the country on the place where i was moving to i just packed my bags and moved okay first i was crazy in last i just didn't care i just wanted to go and be with the man of my dreams but also i knew he was there so i didn't need to do any research if i needed to know anything i'll ask him but i'll tell you the funny thing even if he was an italian he is an Italian born and raised here. So for him, some information was, 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 um, was, was new to him, like it was to me. Um, information about how to get my, my resident card, how to apply for different things, you know, my health card. But I relied, I relied on him for all this information, yet we were both learning together. I don't know if you get my point. So do your research. Even if you do have a person, a point of reference, it is great. Trust me, that's the best thing that can ever happen. But also do your own research because they don't know it all. You know, I thought he knew it all, but he didn't know it all. There are things that I'm even teaching him, like he learned from me. So do your research. I did zero research when I was moving to Italy. Zero research. I had been here on holiday, so I was like, it's just going to be the same thing. Just you know, pack my bags, go there and, you know, live the, the good life. La dolce vita, they call it. 
Ah, it wasn't exactly like that. The third one is expectations. Now guys, expectations versus reality, mm, there can be a huge gap in there. So um, I think that one of the mistakes I made was to have these expectations of what life would be like in Italy, of what um, my opportunities would be when it comes to the um, job market or, or, or the opportunities to create my own thing, to launch myself into the country, um, expectations on how things work, how fast things work, or just the expectations. I had created a picture in my mind of what life would be like, you know, and my, my expectations were met with different realities. So what I'm trying to say is that when you move to a new place, doesn't matter where, don't have very high expectations or don't have any expectations at all. Just go in with an open mind and then receive whatever the country, the place you've moved to is giving you and work with that. Trust me, this will save you a lot of disappointments and a lot of unnecessary planning because you're planning this, but the reality is that. Very helpful tip. The fourth mistake which very many people make when they move to new places is comparing this new place you've moved to to where you came from, to back home. So I'm from Uganda, Africa, East Africa, and um, there, there's a way things work there. And it's a different lifestyle, it's a different culture. I moved to Europe, Italy, Milan, and there's a way things work here, a different culture, a different language, a different lifestyle but the thing is i was so stuck in my ways in the early years when i moved here i was so stuck in how how things work back home things i was used to and i kept comparing that to here so the thing is when you move to a new place you need to have the desire to make this place your home you understand what i mean like don't be thinking Back home, we do it this way. How come they don't do it here? Well, you're not back home. You need to get with the program. You need to get with this new place where you are. And this was a very big mistake for, on my part because I stayed in that brain, I don't know what me and my friends call it, a brain lock. Like you stay locked into how things should work according to, you know, what your, you know, your brain is locked into. And yet there's a new way of, 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 of you know there's a new way things are working where you are and it's up to you to make this new place your home and to make it work for you so for example um back home you don't really have to make appointments to see a doctor like you just walk into a hospital walk into a clinic and you will have you know the doctor right there waiting for you when i moved here even if you're in so much pain I and mean, of course if you're in excessive pain you go to the emergency but if you're not in excessive pain and you need to see a doctor you need to make an appointment and maybe they're not available then you need to make phone calls and it first me and I'll tell my husband but back home we do it this way well you're not back home so get with the program mistake number five which is also the last mistake for the video because I'm sure over the years I've made very many other mistakes that I may not be able to put in this um, specific video actually if you have some mistakes you've made moving into a new country a new town or a new house I don't know share them with me down in the comment section but for me the last mistake is going to be something um, personal to me, I guess, because of my personal situation. I hold on to the hope of going back home or of going to another place, to another country. Like, okay, if this country doesn't work, we can move to some other place or move to some other town if Milan doesn't work for us. And this was a very big mistake because my mind remained in transit. <laughs> if that makes sense that's what i call it i remained in transit you know when you're not sure if you're going to stay in a place you're kind of resistant to change you're resistant to the new things because you're thinking i won't even need these things anymore so it took me a long time to actually come to the acceptance that this is home i kept feeling like italy's home but it's not home you know, home is back in Uganda or maybe we'll move to some other place because if I'm not at home where I was born and raised in Uganda, then I can be anywhere and call it home. So this is not necessarily my home. And that made me resist 
the new changes that were occurring while I was, you know, trying to settle into Italy. It took me a long, t a longer time to learn the language. It took me a longer time to make friends. It took me a longer time to just simply, even mentally, accept that this is my new home. Until I finally had kids. Actually, even after I had kids, I still had that that feeling of being in transit. Like I'm not really home. And I'll tell you something. My mental state, my homesickness. My missing home and my resistance to change all um, reduced when I woke up that day and said, this is home, I'm going to make it work, I'm not in transit, I'm not waiting for a day where I'm going back home or moving to a new country. I had a talk with my husband and I said, we're here for at least the next five, ten years, we're here, right? He says, yeah, we are here. Okay, so now let's make this thing work. And from that day onward, guys, my life was different. My life was different and I started to even feel Italian. <laughs> so yeah, um, resisting change and keeping your mind in that state of transit doesn't help you. Even if you're here for a short time, like if you're on contract and maybe it's a long-term contract, say five years, in those five years, you want to feel like this is your home. So remove that feeling of being in transit of doesn't matter I'm going because fine you're going but in those years you're there you're going to be unhappy. So make the place work, make it home for you and yeah that's um, basically what I had to share today. Guys I really want to hear from people who have moved. I also have a page about people who have moved on Instagram. It's called a relocation story. Go and check it out. If you have a relocation story to share, please do share it with me. You can mail me. You can um, DM me on my Instagram. I would love to hear from you. And see you in my next video. Bye-bye, guys.